What the hell is that? Well, that's what hundreds of people who saw me driving around with all the stuff on the front of my car wondered too. So let's find out. What's up, my friend? It's Ted from Tesla Details, looking at all things to do with the design, science, and ownership of the Tesla Model 3. Today, I'd like to take us on an exploration of the front end of the Tesla Model 3, particularly the aerodynamics of this car. Because it has the lowest drag coefficient, 0.23, of any production car on the road these days, something I find quite impressive, there's got to be some thought put into this uh, front end to do with aerodynamics and the drag. So let's look into what that might be. So I don't know if you've ever been talking to somebody and there's just something about their face that's very distracting. It just kind of draws your eye right to it, like whenever you look at it. And uh, you, you just can't think of anything else. What's that? What's that over here? Oh, good call. That's a true friend. I appreciate that. Well, on the Model 3, that is this. What is this thing? Is this a lip? Is it a nose? I'd like to propose we come to regard this as the philtrum. That's right, that's this part of your body. Look it up and impress your friends at the next party, philtrum. So I would argue that this is a feature that no automotive engineer would give a car just for looks. It's gotta do something. You look at the rest of this car and everything is all about being aerodynamic and functional and the beauty of it follows, but there's something about this that's not there. So I'd like to do a basic aerodynamic test on this just to measure the streamlines of airflow over the front of this car, not just this part, but several other areas too, so we can visualize how the air moves. I don't have any sophisticated pressure measuring or velocity measuring instrumentation, and I can only account for the airflow over the laminar layer that's right against the car, maybe one centimeter deep, and we can visualize it. So there's a lot left out, but we can start by looking at which way the air flows and maybe come to some conclusions about why this front end was designed the way it is. So I called up Elon and Franz and those guys and asked them about what's up with this and they said something about proprietary information. So they're no help. But nonetheless, if you think you know or if you know you know and you maybe work for Tesla, put it in the comments. I'm really curious to think what everybody thinks when we have a little conversation about this, particularly Tesla owners. Now the Model X and the Model S also have a variation of this front fascia that looks flat but is actually a little bit overhung. So it's no accident of design in the Model 3. It's a Tesla thing. There's something going on here. So when I look at a Model 3 on the road, the front fascia reads as basically vertical to the eye. However, when you check this against uh, a T-square on level ground, the re main recess there is actually 2.4 centimeters, 24 millimeters or an inch for us Americans. The upper lip is seven millimeters and the lower lip is 18 millimeters too. So there's a definite overhung trend in this part of the fascia. So that tells me this is not just a structural bumper mechanism or front capacity increasing mechanism. So the airflow over the, the hood itself is probably straight back and posteriorly up over the windshield, but I am curious to find out what happens in this band right here, which is just above the vertical front fascia. Does this impart some turbulence up and over this lip right here, and does that create any sort of effects in the laminar flow zone over this front band? The front quarter of the car is, I believe, to be the most beautifully styled part of the car, and just like any face, you know, the eyes can really make it, so the headlights are beautifully designed, and I think aerodynamically designed in a way that the air is going to flow pretty much like we think, radially, right over and posteriorly and along the side here. Behind the air intake is where you'll find the air conditioner condenser and the coolant radiator for the battery and motor system where the glycol circulates and cools off the battery and motor when we need to. Now this has louvers which open and close. They appear to close completely, but it's hard to know. But even when they are open or closed, how does the airflow into and possibly out of this air intake it's very deliberately deep and scoop-like, like it's taking in an aggressive amount of air. But it's interesting to note that this section here is basically dummy plastic fascia right there, which may or may not contribute any to the inflow, or it may create some outflow from this intake area. So what I did was attach a bunch of evenly spaced tufts of yarn and drove around on a main road in my town and on a freeway, usually about 50 miles per hour, but up to 110 miles per hour at one point. You'll see a little wiggle from light winds and maybe turbulence from leading cars, but the streamlined trend for each tuft is pretty apparent anyway. The idea is that the yarn tufts will follow the streamlines of air which are right against the surface, so the laminar flow of the relative wind as the car pushes its way through the air. There's obviously much more to the overall aerodynamics of a Model 3 design, but 
This is a starting point to visualize how the air flows around the car. Let's start with the trademark uh, flat front of the car, the part we're focusing on, the filtrum as I call it. Now above the midpoint, the air deflects up and flows to some degree over the top of the car and below it, it flows down. That's pretty apparent. And the central part, the air pretty much goes straight up and straight down, which is about what we might think since there's no sort of vertical wedge to split the air to flow to the sides at the center here. For this run, I split one of the center row of tufts into two, one a little higher and one a little lower, to try and get a more precise idea where the split in the airflow occurred. It's not perfect, but I think that point is about 55% of the way down from the upper lip, but in any case, it's somewhere between 50 and 60%. At and behind the upper lip, the streamlines are straight back, but at least they're laminar. There's no separation that I can see. This air must be further compressed up and over the windshield, so that inevitably adds drag to the car. In the center by the Tesla badge, it appears the flow is smooth and laminar with the tufts right against the surface. If the airflow were to detach from the surface at any point, this is probably where it would happen as it clears the lip vertically. In an airplane wing, depending on where the airflow detachment occurs, this may result in an aerodynamic stall. Actually, one of the row of tufts got sucked into the panel gap at the front, so there is a little bit of flow into that gap, though I think it's probably small and incidental. Moving towards the side and around to the quarter panel and headlight area, the streamlines go right around the side, and then as we move up, it goes a little bit more vertically to a small extent. I estimate all of this air still ends up going around the side of the profile of the car rather than over, so probably along the side of the door and the side windows and mirrors area. The air curtains at the front wheels are one of my favorite aerodynamic features of the Model 3. The streamlines from the lower recess part of the car lead directly into the air current intakes, and we can only suppose that there is nice high velocity air coming through those air curtains. From this perspective, you can imagine that all that volume of air is being shot straight through the curtain slot and around the side of the front wheel. And this is supposedly how the air curtains reduce drag around the front wheel wells. Now this is a region of interest right here where there's clearly air coming from inside the intake recess and spilling back to the side causing turbulence. You can see this in every shot at every speed with and without the air conditioner on at the beginning and end of a drive. So I believe this is independent of whether the louvers are open or closed. And if there's any one aerodynamic finding that I would thumbs down on this car, this is it. But it's probably a small thing. Looking more closely at the functional part of the intake, the inflow is pretty obvious. In many shots, you'll see the lower tufts have become entrained in the air below the intake splitter and just got stuck under the car. Uh, but in this view, I've moved them slightly inside, and the airflow is positive, but with varying speeds depending on the louvers. I couldn't manually control the louvers, but I did cycle the AC several times and I drove for a while, and I did actually catch the louver in at least some states of open or closed, or at least more open and less open. So keep an eye on this part of the louver here and you can see it disappear as the louver opens. At that point, the airflow is clearly more aggressive. But we can still see that turbulent air flowing away from us and out of the intake chamber area. I hope you found this aerodynamic exploration of the front end of the Model 3 interesting. It's pretty basic, has plenty of limitations, but it's kind of cool to see, I think. I still don't really like the look of the flat front of this car, but I see slightly more how it might contribute to the aerodynamic performance of the car. If anyone is interested, I may do the same for other parts of the car, so let me know. It occurred to me that other factors might actually come into play in this design. For example, I'm aware that there are European standards for pedestrian safety for the cars that may hit them, and therefore the shape may be meant to push the person over rather than roll them up onto the hood, or fracture their knee instead of their tibial shaft, or maybe that front fascia is mushy in a way that helps protect a human that it hits and therefore lessen the injury. And I'm sure there are reasons I haven't even thought of, so if you have any ideas, leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching, and you know where to find me.